Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. And today, we're going to use my new to me HVLP spray unit to paint that wall. By the way, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So first, let me give you some quick background on this HVLP spray unit. That I The challenge I'm facing today is this is what I want to spray. Kills 2 water-based primer. Now, if you've ever dealt with Kills 2, you know that this stuff is thick. I mean, really, really thick. And in order to spray this stuff, you're going to have to thin it down. And the question is always, how much do you thin it down? Now, I've used Kills before uh, in the other section of the shop. I did the same thing with the walls, and I wanted it nice and bright white. And so I tried using regular paints, and they just would not cover up these kind of markings and this blue paint that's on the edges. And it just didn't look good, and I had to use so many coats of regular paint that it was more expensive than using kills, which isn't all that expensive, really. Now, the way I did it before was... I was using a Wagner power painter and that it worked great for the first hour or two and then it began leaking around the roller and just making a mess. I went ahead, pushed through, finished the job, uh, probably leaked out at least a gallon of paint out of that head, but I got it done and then I said, nah, forget it, I, just, I threw the thing in the trash. Well, then a couple of years later, I had to do another section of the garage. I thought, well, okay, maybe I just had a dud. Let me go get another one. Bought another Wagner Power Painter. Fired it up after about a couple of hours. Same thing. Started leaking around the head. And this was two, two, three years later. So it wasn't just a bad batch. So I finished up the job, cleaned it up, stuck it back in the box, and back to Amazon it went. And I said, no, never again. If I'm going to try something, I'm going to try spraying. Now, like I said, the, the issue is we need to thin down kills in order to spray it. So in order to know exactly how much you have to thin it down, you use this thing called a viscosity cup. And this came with the sprayer. In the owner's manual, it gives you a chart of various types of things you might want to spray and a time. And the way you use the viscosity cup is you scoop up a full cup of whatever it is you're going to spray and you time how long it takes to drain out, how long it takes before it stops running out the bottom. And it should be, according to that chart with latex paints, 20 to 30 seconds for this to completely drain. That's an appropriate thinness to, uh, to spray it. So I started off just measuring straight kills. Like I said, it's thick. I had no idea how thick. It took seven and a half minutes for this cup to drain. So I got to start thinning it down. I got myself an empty paint can and I put in 80 ounces of kills. And then I started off putting in 10% water or eight ounces of water. Mixed it up. And the time dropped, but not by a whole bunch. It, the cup drained in about five minutes. So I added some more and measured, added some more. I ended up getting the drain time down to 28 seconds by adding 32 ounces of water to the original 80, or about a 40% dilution rate. Okay, so I'm going to go get everything ready. I'm going to go put the spray unit off towards the uh, other end of the room, away from where we're spraying because, like I said, HVLP creates an atomized spray of paint, and even though HVLP doesn't have as much overspray, it puts about two-thirds of the material onto the surface. The rest of it does flash dry in the form of dust, and you don't want that getting sucked back in 
to the uh, the spray unit and into and clogging up your filters. So before we get started, I just want to explain a couple of things. First of all, the reason that there is no OSB on the bottom two feet of the wall here is because we're in an area that is occasionally prone to flooding. And about once a decade or so, we'll get as much as a foot or maybe a foot and a half of water in the building. And so I designed the entire shop and garage to withstand that with no damage. In this case, it, the insulation would get a little wet. I would just cut it off take it out, replace it, and no problem. Now, the other thing is I'd rather not have overspray all over it. And, and I admit it is just a shop in a garage, but I'd like to look, make it look somewhat neat. So I'm just gonna use this piece of styrofoam insulation to act as a block and just slide it along here to keep from spray overspraying onto the insulation. Now, the other thing is that as I was saying, HVLP lays most of the material onto the surface you're spraying, and you're going to lose about one-third of it as overspray, which uh, what happens is it ends up drying into a dust. Now, this is not good stuff to breathe in, so I will be using a respirator to filter the air while I'm spraying. I've started up the turbine unit, and it's really quite quiet. It's about the volume of maybe a... Uh, a quiet shop back. So the uh, the hose here on the end, it's got a, a valve to control the airflow so that it's not blowing constantly if you take the gun off. Slide this on and, and uh, if you've seen my episode on hose quick connectors, and I'll, I'll put a link to it uh, I think right up here somewhere, these are the exact same hose connectors I was talking about that I use for my water hoses. All right, so let's, uh, let's try this out. As I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do some initial tests here, then I'll put the respirator on. So, hmm. Oh, oh, it helps. Now I've got the air on. Okay, a slight squeeze puts out the air. I'm gonna turn the fan pattern. Okay. All right, so, that position is for the round, and this gets us the oval pattern. Oh, that is covering so nicely. Okay, that seems a little heavy at first glance, but uh, it's not running or anything, at least so far. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go down to this end and start, I'm gonna go down to the far end and start spraying the actual wall. Well, well this is the actual wall, but you know what I mean. This is just super easy to do. I'm gonna see, I think by adjusting this needle in, I get more fluid on it. Boy, my hand is getting tired holding this trigger already. Yeah. I'm already, okay, that I poured up is already gone. I can definitely feel I'm burning through this paint really fast. I am beat. So I finished painting the wall and I gotta say, I'm kind of disappointed. Now, I'm not sure how well this is coming across on camera, but this is very, very uneven. Um, like over here, it's pretty well uh, covered, even though it definitely is going to need a second coat. Whereas here, uh, it's very, you can see very clearly the, the uh, brown color through it. And now that is not 
the fault of the HVLP. That is totally on me. That's my lack of practice, my lack of uh, technique on using a sprayer, period. Not any limitation of the HVLP. So that definitely could be fixed. Um, I was a little concerned because I put down, spraying this wall, just the one coat. I used about a half a gallon of paint and to only get this much coverage, um, maybe, I don't see a lot of dust or overspray anywhere. I'm not sure why it's not covering well with a half a gallon put on here. Regardless of that, I have definitely decided HVLP is not the way to go for spraying walls, at least for me and using this particular application. And the reason is not the HVLP system itself. The problem is the size of the cup on the gun. Now, I wouldn't want to make the gun any bigger or the cup any bigger because it's already heavy enough. I am worn out because that gun gets heavy holding it going back and forth. And my arms are really tired. They're going to be sore and I can tell. The problem, as I said, is that the cup is so small. And the time I spent getting that off the ladder, going over, taking out the cup, refilling it, putting it back on, I literally spent more time changing or refilling the cup than I did spraying the wall. So in terms of efficiency, it's a real killer. So as much as I don't want to do it, I'm afraid my answer is, well, I don't want to go back to using a Wagner power painter. I certainly don't want to roll this by hand without uh, just regular rollers. That will take a long time. So I'm going to break down. Home Depot just put a very nice airless sprayer on sale, a Graco, one of their bigger, well, one of their medium range models. It's on sale for 50 bucks off, so it's around $350. I'm gonna go pick one of those up and give it a try with that. Now, the major advantage to one of these airless sprayers is you can take the tube from the sprayer and you can put it right in the bucket and draw from there. So you, you don't have, there's no cup to refill. So consequently, the, um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The gun should be a whole lot lighter because you're not carrying around a quart of paint or you know something like that. And my concern about the hose, I don't know how heavy the hose is. Regardless, it should do a better job because it can spray just straight latex paint. That's what they're designed to do. And I'm looking on the side of the Kills uh, bucket and it says that Yes, you can use an airless sprayer to spray this unthinned. However, you have to use a 0.017 to 0.2 something tip. And the smaller Graco sprayers or the smaller um, airless sprayers in general, they can't run a tip that big. So to get a 0.17, I have to step up to the uh, medium models. And the least expensive of those is the, the one that Home Depot just put on sale for $350. So I'll probably be back in a few days with uh, the airless sprayer. We'll give that a try, see how it compares to the HVLP. And we'll look at the pros and cons. I, I can tell you right now, in ter in, at least for me, the HVLP, as wonderful as it's going to be for other things like spray painting small stuff or maybe some automotive work, that is going to be great. I really love the feel and the way it sprays, but for big stuff like painting uh, this, these walls in here or we're about to start painting our entire house, which is going to be probably, oh, 10,000 square feet of walls. If I can do it with a sprayer, that's going to be a whole lot easier than trying to use a roller. So guys, that's it for today. Please go down there, find that thumbs up button and give us a like on the video. It really helps us get more visibility on YouTube searches. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, go down there and find that bell icon and click on it so that it changes from the regular bell to the bell with the little lines around it to show that it's ringing. What you're doing there is you're turning on the YouTube notification system for just this channel. And that way, YouTube will let you know every time that I post new content from here in Cliff's Garage. I will see you next time.